In this video, I'm going to be rearranging formulas, a super important skill to have here. Now, a lot of people, when they think of a formula, they think it's a thing that gives them an answer. For instance, the area of a rectangle is equal to length times width. They think of this as a formula that if you know length and width, it'll spit area out for you. But I don't want you to think about it as like a recipe that spits out a, a thing. Instead, I want you to think of it as a relationship. This is a relationship between A, L, and W. And we can rearrange it to make any of these things what's called the subject. So we could write this as A divided by L equals W. Now it's not the area formula, it's the width formula. We could also rewrite it as A divided by W equals L. Now it's not the area formula, it's the length formula. So. When you've got a formula with variables, you can make any of those variables what's called the subject. And when you do that, you're able to um, find whatever value you need to find. Uh, very useful skill. Example, we're being given a formula. I don't know what this formula does. I don't care. All I'm trying to do is make t the subject. So who's with t at the moment? The number 2 and p. Now, my order of operations, um, you might be used to bomb dash, but when we're doing this solving, we need to work backwards, says that I need to get rid of, um, I need to get rid of subtraction and addition first. But that's not actually true, or at least not in this instance, because there's actually a set of brackets around this t plus 2 that you can't see because it's there. And we need to do our brackets last. So what we actually need to do first is our division and multiplication. So we're going to multiply both sides by P, which is going to give us DP equals T plus 2. Now those brackets have disappeared now because the vinculum's no longer there. And now I can subtract 2 from both sides and I'll get DP minus 2 equals T. So now T is the subject. That's the answer. And to do this is to then be able to calculate T directly using our new formula. So calculate t when d equals 10 and p equals 5, Just sub in the number 10. Easy to put it in brackets like this, the number 10, the number 5, minus 2 equals t. t will be 50 minus 2, which is 48. Our answer, t equals 48. Another example here, make c the subject, so this is c, we want to get c by itself. We've got this square root sitting above it, so that's the first thing we have to get rid of. The opposite of square root is squared, so we're going to square both sides. 3c minus 7a. And now we've got 3c here and negative 7a. We want c to be by itself, so we need to get rid of this negative 7a by adding 7a to both sides. And finally, we need to get rid of this 3. This is 3 times c. So to get rid of that, we divide both sides by 3. C equals e squared plus 7a over 3. For example, we want to get C by itself. At the moment, we have this plus d squared on this side, so we can get rid of that plus d squared. H squared minus d squared equals C squared. And then to get rid of this squared, so all we're left with is the C, we need to take the square root of both sides. The square root of C squared is C. The square root of this, H squared minus d squared. But don't forget plus or minus. You're going to get two answers when you square root something. That plus or minus is really important. Again, we want to make C the subject. So what do we have? We have 2 pi times the square root of C over G. A good way to think about this, if you're really not sure what to do first, is to ask yourself, put yourself in C's position and say, right, what happened to C? C got divided by G then it got square rooted, then it got multiplied by 2 pi. Okay, start here and then work from here. And then once you've done that, C got divided by G, then we got square rooted, then we got multiplied by 2 pi, then work in reverse. The last thing that happened was multiplied by 2 pi. So that's the first thing I should get rid of by dividing both sides by 2 pi. Okay, you might be thinking like there's a plus minus here. If there's the plus mo if the square root's already there and there's no plus or minus, it doesn't exist. It's not there. Okay, the next thing that we know happened, or the second last thing that happened to C, was that it got square rooted. So to get rid of a square root, we square both sides. So 
a over 2 pi square all of that. And then finally, c got divided by g, so now we need to multiply by g. g bracket a over 2 pi squared equals c. Okay, um, that is a rearrangement of this to make c the subject. So a word question, the formula for surface area is this. By first making r the subject, calculate the radius when the surface area is this. All right, so let's make r the subject. S equals 4 pi r squared. Uh, to make r the subject, what happened to r? r got squared and then it got multiplied by 4 pi. So the first thing I need to get rid of is that 4 pi, 4 pi r squared. Um, and then we need to get rid of this squared and the way to get rid of that is to do a square root. S over 4 pi um, square root plus or minus. Now that plus or minus, something's going to happen to that in a minute, but we're going to leave it there for now. All right. Uh, by first making R the subject, calculate the radius when the surface area is 450. All right. So there's our surface area. That's an S, not a 5. All right. So plus or minus square root. The surface area is 450 divided by 4 pi equals R. All right, when you type those into your calculator, plus square root 450 over 4 pi and minus square root 450 divided by 4 pi, you'll get two answers. R equals or minus 5.98. Uh, now, negative radius doesn't make sense. So we reject the negative because radius is positive. So R equals 5.98. I'm going to do this one uh, because there's a trick at the end that you may or may not get right. Make R the subject. So V equals 4 thirds pi R cubed. Now, what happened to R? R got cubed and then it got multiplied by uh, 4 thirds pi. So we should divide V by 4 thirds pi. And we get R cubed. And then we should take the cube root to get rid of the r cubed. So that'll leave us with r cube root v over 4 thirds pi. Now, you might be tempted to put a plus or minus. That is wrong. There is no plus or minus. Plus or minus doesn't work for cube roots. And the reason for that is that there is only one answer when you cube root something. Uh, for instance, uh, if you work the other way, if you take 3 and cube it, you'll get 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. If you take negative 3 and cube it, you'll get negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3, which is negative 27. They're not the same. Okay, so we don't need a plus minus for a cube root. We would need a plus minus if it was a to the power of 4, but we wouldn't if it was a power of 5. So even powers need a plus minus, a plus minus, but odd powers do not need a plus minus. It's something to keep in mind when you're rearranging these. So we've gone through quite a few examples here, but as always, the key to this is to practice, practice, practice. Do your work, check your answer, and then if you get them wrong, ask yourself what's happening or ask me what's happening. All right, good luck.